Maybe I'm crazy, mm-hmm. but there's a new curse, and Jason Witten is responsible for it. Uh, I don't want to. Am I allowed to? No. It is. It is the. It is the curse of mediocrity. Right, Ashley? Uh, yes. Shouts out to that. That look means yes. Can't see to, it, but she went like this. Shout out to Tony Romo. Yes. Shout out to Tony Romo. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. That's Brandon Newman. Hola. Um, it was a good day today. It was a good we're, day. We were jam, jamming to some, uh, yes. some late 90s, early 2000 uh, R&B. Yes, we'll put you in the mood. 3LW. Yes. You will. 702. Uh, don't mess with my man. Black. Don't mess with my man. I'm going to be the one to bring it to you. Your shirt, white man can't jump. Yes. Oh, is white man can't jump. Yes, Billy Hoyle. Got to have it. Beautiful. Rosie Perez. Billy, oh. you spent all the fucking money. Mm. I was obsessed with I was obsessed with Crazy Girls for a little bit after that movie. Um, people have been telling me my entire life that I look like Rosie Perez, and I oh I take it as a compliment every time because I love yeah, Rosie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's uh, great. Rosie can get down. If you haven't seen Rosie on Soul Train, you're missing out. It's Ooh. worth a YouTube. Ooh. Uh, she Ooh. is fabulous. Ooh. She's incredibly sexy, and she's an insane laugh. Oh my gosh! Uh, which I endorse because yeah. I because I I too have an annoying laugh. People say that about about our laughs sometimes. Yeah, my sister's been telling me my entire life that I have an annoying laugh, and I thought it was just because she's my younger sister. And then, uh, and then I got on radio, and um, actually, shout out to Danielle on the Elvis Duran Morning Show. She's an inspiration to me because she has a very rambunctious laugh, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? If it works for her, uh, she's on a pretty popular show. I think I can pull that off too. Yeah, you gotta so do it. I stopped in. trying to do a fake laugh, and my laugh is annoying, and you have to deal with it. Nice. So that's how we're gonna start the show. Um, we have lots of stuff today. Melissa yes. Rycroft is going yes. to join us. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, mm. which are a legendary staple in right, sports. Right, let me apologize for the mm I gave because I grew yeah, a know- lot. Yeah, you, you know what like, you do. I, I, I I've been meaning to, clarify, to talk to you about this. Yeah, just like a sound box this. of the mm. during interviews, you do do the mm sound a lot, mm-hmm. um, and I know it's because you you're feeling it in your soul, so mm. you can't help it. Right. Um, not always necessary. Mm-hmm. My own my own opinion. Other people may like it, mm. but that's just what I'm saying to you. Because see, you do you you don't you do it so much you don't notice, mm. and then you have to apologize for it. Like when you when I say Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, there you mm. go. See. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yes. I'm sorry, using words. Uh, Bachelor and um, <laughs> yeah, so and she's very Texas, so we got we have lots yes, of fun stuff yes, to talk yes, to her yes. about. Uh, yes, sorry. shout out, shout out to Texas. Texas, we love screaming, Texas. Yes. Yeah. We love Texas. I do, um, I do actually. Lots of stuff to get to today, so mm-hmm. let's start with Melissa. All right, Melissa Rykoff is joining us. Mm-hmm. You are actually our first female guest. No. Yes. yes. No. Thank you so much. Well, do I get my name on we the wall or something? Yes, 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 you, you, yes, you do get yes. your name on the wall. Yes, we'll, we'll yes, get to that later. Yes. Um, okay. But yes, yeah, so thanks so much for joining us uh, and coming in today. And you are a part of the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleaders Making the Team mm-hmm. show on CMT, which premieres on Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Pacific on CMT. Yep. Uh, and you were a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Over a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, pish posh. You know, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like potato, a, it's potato. Like a, of favor, it a long know? time ago. Once yes. you were a Dallas Cowboys yeah. cheerleader, you're always, <laughs> always Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Um, so I got a chance to cover the Miami Dolphins cheerleading tryouts for a couple years okay. when I was in Miami. And I have a friend, hello, MJ, uh, and Monica. Uh, and I know. Uh, yes. Shout out. Uh, yeah. Lots of other girls who <laughs> were uh, cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a dancer growing up. Um, I I played sports, but my dad thought dancing was the devil, so I didn't. Oh, I didn't have yeah. To right. do that. So, um, sorry, dad. Stay yeah. Away from the devil. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm. You know that. Sorry, like dad. you know things that are red. Um, <laughs> stuff you mean like we that. We blue and white. Oh, my <laughs> yes, I'm good. Yes, yes, I'm good. Yes, 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 safe. So when did you when did you start dancing? Because I feel like dancers start when they're like yay big. They do. I mean, my mom threw me in it when I was three. Um, and then I started to really like it, and then I started to not like it, and I took a few years off. But I think, I maybe I can think like with sports, it's like it's just what you did, so it's mm-hmm. kind of in right. you, and that's kind of how dance was with me. It just, you know, a song would come on, and I'm bobbing my head to the music, and going, I'm just, I think it's just in me. Yeah. So I kind of just kept it up as long as I could. And when did you decide, because I, I don't know, if, to me the concept terrifies me, but I guess if you're, I'm not a dancer, so the idea of getting on stage and doing a dance is like, I don't, I mean, no. It's nothing, yeah. Uh, right? That's not happening, <laughs> ever. So I've watched these these tryouts. Have you ever been to a tryout? No. They're hard. They're, oh, they're no, insane. I, 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 watched, I watched the show right. like when it started. Yeah. And, like I was just, I, was, I mean. Made you sweat watching it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're yeah. insane. Like they're, they really are. Yeah. They're insane competition. Yeah. And, and t- for dancers, like this is the ultimate th- thing, or I would imagine, being a uh, Yeah, I mean, in the professional world, this is kind of the highest that right. these girls can get. So 
you know, where'd you get the courage to do that? Uh, I was going through a breakup at the time, Beautiful. honestly. I know, I had been you know? in a seven year relationship and he never really wanted me to do anything like this on my own. We broke up and I literally saw a commercial for the Dallas Cowboys Trailer tryouts coming up this weekend and I went, you know, why not? Yeah. I'll give it a shot. And then here we are, 11 years later, it changed my life. What audition did you do? Because the way the Dolphins had it is like you do a group thing. Yeah. And then you have your own like, solo. solo. Yep. Yeah. So what did you, what song did you do for your solo? Um, I did Chicago, All That Jazz. Ooh. I wore the Velma wig and everything. Yes. Is, is that good? Classy. Thank you. With my, <laughs> with my fishnets just to really make oh, it classy. Man. You know. Everybody else is probably doing Lil John or something. And she over here. Dancing. What? I don't know, yeah. 10 years ago maybe? No. I, you know, just like, you know, the popular yeah, song. Done. And she came out. Hey, I stayed in my lane. Hip hop, yeah. Lil John. I it probably wouldn't have gone well right, for me. Right, with the routine. So exactly. That you had prepared. Exactly. Right. What was the worst part of the tryouts? Because everyone always says it's it's kind of it's sort of like the pageant, like the interview process is the scariest. Yes. Listen, I wasn't. I was not trying out for the cheerleaders right. and. Uh, the the head of the cheerleaders, uh, the woman in Miami is. I mean, she is just no nonsense. I, I, mm. I feel like I was going to get in trouble. Oh my god, intimidating, really right? Not. Yes, I'm not trying out. Just, <laughs> but it's a scary room to be in. I imagine it is a really scary room. I went in really naive to not, you know before this whole show documented what happened, you didn't really know what was going on behind the right, curtain. Right. You know, right. it was like, okay, next round. What does that entail? Mm -hmm. So I had the beauty of not really knowing. For me, though, the first round, it's um, it's improv dancing. I don't know if mm -hmm. you guys have done improv dancing. I, I do it every, I've done every day. I've done improv comedy. You can look really yes. bad. Really, Ooh, yes. really bad. So, so someone's what is, judging you. What does that mean? So improv basically dancing. they put on a song, you don't know what the song is, and you have to go out and dance to it. Mm. To the rhythm, make it look like you. In groups? You're in groups. Mm. Yeah, groups of five. Yeah. You don't know what song they're going to play, and you have one minute to get out there and dance. And it's scary because improv, I can give me eight counts and I'm great. You take me to a club, I have no clue what I'm doing. And that's basically yeah. what improv dancing is. Right. And uh, so that was very scary. Dang. But what do they ask you in the interview process? Or, or, or just in the room where they're like. In the, well, what they, they really just want to make sure you can have a conversation of some mm. sort. You know, they obviously will test a little football knowledge. Um, a lot of times they'll say, you know, who's the president? Just trying to help you out. Um, but it's more, I think they just want to see how you handle yourself if you can't answer the question or you get a lot of blank stares sometimes mm -hmm. where you're going, just say something. Right, like right. Anything. Smile through it. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. do something. <laughs> well, I mean, I, th I think it's actually important because what people don't realize with, with cheerleaders um, and maybe I just, this is just my experience because my brother has a foundation in Miami. Mm -hmm. The cheerleaders are a big part of the community. Like they're mm -hmm. going, uh, yeah. the players can't go to every event. So mm -hmm. the team will send the cheerleaders out to represent the team yep. and you're interacting with people. It's not like you're up in some, you know, up on some stage or something the entire right. time. Like you're down talking to people. You got to make sure that the, you know, these women can represent the team properly. Right. Yeah. So do people mess up on the president question? Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh, All the time. Like the here's the, here's the ones that get me when because obviously I work with the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. So when you're in that room, it's like I should at least know who my cheerle you know my my Cowboys players are. Right, right. And they'll ask you know who's the owner, and the girls are like President Trump. <laughs> And you're like, oh, if anything, just know that. Know, know a couple of the players so you can throw out a name or two, right, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I feel like people panic in those situations, too. Like, there it's is like panic. when you watch a pageant and they ask you, the, like, the, the pageant question yes, or whatever. Yes, yes. They like, do. you're just supposed to give a vanilla answer, you know? And then you just get nervous and you panic. Oh, it's very hard. I don't like how people always make fun of those competitions and the pageants because... You put yourself on the spot there, ask a like random question. Like as, such as, where to, yes, hear like all. Such oh. as, yeah. Like such as, mm. such a good pause. I like such as. But I guess it's better than just saying, uh. Um, I don't know. I, I, did don't a, know. I did a pageant in Miami. I did a pageant I was was little. You were a pageant girl? Sang, you were a pageant girl, Joy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joy. I know. Uh, no, 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 just relax. Yeah, just relax, relax. <laughs> relax. No, 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 no. Quick beat? No, my friend Annie Lee won. She was much more deserving. Um, <laughs> so, uh, no, I did one when I was little. I think it was five. Uh, yeah, she is a friend. Okay. okay uh, she, but she was she was she a, pa she was was a pageant checking. girl, which is why she deserved to win. Okay, she was okay, very cool, polished. Cool, 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 cool. Um, she had the walk, the hair. Um, anyway, when I was five, I sang uh, The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. That was adorable. Uh, I also did not win. So I got Miss Photogenic, though. Well, hey. I was, I was Most pissed. photogenic. That sounds like a real win. Uh, if you're not first, you're, you're last. Yeah. So I in was the not, pageant. I was not happy. Right, right, I don't think they give away other awards at the pageants. Yeah, you know, it was like a, it was like a participation <laughs> award. It's like, okay. oh, I yeah. got the pictures. Thanks. Yeah. Duh. 
Uh, I knew that. Like, That's like, why which, I'm here. Which, which one of the five year olds didn't take a cute picture? <laughs> um, oh, that but if they, when they ask you the question, to me, it's like doing an interview. Like you just have to listen to mm -hmm. what they're asking. Yes. You. yes. And then you'll be fine. Then yeah, you'll be fine. So you become a Dallas Cowboys yeah. cheerleader, and like I've heard horror stories about how you have to stay in incredible shape. We we consider ourselves in a shape. Sure. You know? Oh yeah, round. Yeah. Right. Like I, I like that shape. Sphere. I go to yoga. Yeah. Um, Hot oh, yoga. Nice. Yeah. Okay. See, that that's a step up from regular yoga. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Sweat. yeah. Totally. I went last night. Mm -hmm. um, I Google workouts. I read a lot right. of men's think health. Get your finger. So <laughs> yeah. Plan. You know what I'm saying? I got to get the schedule. I'm on Excel a lot. You right. Know, making the plans. But you guys, do you have to take like do you have to maintain a certain weight? Or like no. do you get fined? Like the players get fined if they don't make a weight? Oh, see, no, we're not that strict. You don't get fined for it. You do have to maintain. But the thing is, there's more self motivation mm. in the maintaining because I'm like, I know what that outfit looks like, right? And I know what I want to look like in the uniform, mm -hmm. so I don't really need somebody pointing it out to me when I've had too many burgers <laughs> over the weekend. Right, right. It's like I want to keep it up for myself. So, yeah, I mean, you come in at a certain weight, and they'd like you to stay near that number if you can. I mean, we've had there have been times where girls either lost too much weight too quickly or gained too much weight too quickly. And that's just, that's more of a health conversation mm. that you have with the girls as opposed to a, how you physically look. Yeah. So, I mean, there's kind of a different uh, waves happening like in mm. society right now. So there's, there's some male cheerleaders entering the NFL spectrum, yep. the Rams and the Saints. Mm -hmm. Did you see the Cowboys and your Texas through and through? Could you see the Cowboys taking... I don't That's know. That for male cheerleaders. Here's my question for you, hypothetically: Would he wear that uniform? Well, I don't think that. I think their uniforms will be, will be different. Would it be different? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I imagine that they yes, will not I be imagine. wearing the skirt. Okay. Well, um, well, we wear shorts. That not we. So yes, <laughs> I yes. wore. <laughs> Fast yes. ten. No, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like the pictures I saw, they have like they have male cheerleader right, outfits, like yeah. whatever you know, college cheerleading versions high, I don't know high school yeah. cheerleaders yeah. Uh, have, have male cheerleaders yeah yes they do yeah, really yeah. Things. yeah. yeah they're, so they're, a male cheerleader outfit but like this, the Rams and the Saints have added male cheerleaders yeah. could you see that working in Dallas I you know what I say I don't know because I have never seen it you know and I look at the cheerleaders and they're called cheerleaders. It's a it's a dance team. It's a hip hop dance team with pom poms. Right. And so it's almost like you need to see it to go. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe that would work, but. I, I don't know. For me, it's a foreign concept right now because I've just never known that. So the Marlins have like a – they call it an energy team. Okay. So but it's 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 guys and girls. Okay. But, they, but like baseball doesn't have cheerleaders. Not really. No. So it's a very Miami thing. I can't imagine right. that working in Boston. Yes, yes. <laughs> Miami likes their parties. We do like our parties. Like all shaped <laughs> forms we, like, we do Everything is a little bit extra. Yes. Like here's, um, here's, a, here's a baseball park. Yes. Brand new. Let's throw in the Clevelander and uh, let's spray paint the tops uh, on, on the window. <laughs> that's all we'll do. Prefer, that's the thing. It's a really, they really do that actually. Yeah. There's a pool there. Um, there okay. So again, the society is a little different now. Yeah. So there's there's like some movement for the stigma that cheerleaders have. I I personally yeah. like it doesn't obviously bother me at all, yeah. but you know, there's there's this idea out there that's kind of outdated to have cheerleaders on the sideline. Some teams don't have them. They've traditionally never had them. Mm -hmm. The Steelers don't have them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's too cold. It's way too cold. It is way too yeah. cold. It's way too cold. Green Bay, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, there are some of those Green Bay doesn't have dancers, right? No. no. Yeah. No. no. But I mean there are places that are cold that have cheerleaders. Totally. Right. But what do you what what do you answer to people that say that like this is this is outdated or it's like demeaning to women or anything like that? Um, well, I don't think it's outdated at all. I mean, I think all you have to do is look at just the revenue stream that the girls bring in, you know, through merchandise, calendars, appearances, mm -hmm. things like that alone. Um, and then the demeaning part, I I guess being having been on the inside and now being on the outside, I have a hard time understanding because I look at the girls going, you know what you're getting into. I mean, I knew. I knew what the outfit was. I knew what right. my role was for the team. Um, certainly 11 years ago, nobody thought it was demeaning when I wore that uniform. I think what has happened is, you know, social media has come in. There's been this big women's movement. But I think saying it's demeaning to the girls kind of takes away a little bit of the credit that they deserve of everything True. else that they do and everything else that they represent. So there's been some stories. Obviously, there's some lawsuits floating mm -hmm. out there and, and things of that nature. And you just said that you know what you're getting into. Yeah. Uh, I can buy into that idea. Obviously, like, you know what the outfit is. You know what Dallas yeah, Cowboys yeah. cheerleaders are. 
Um, but there are some sh women who have been cheerleaders or who have tried out, who've been unhappy with the experience. And, you know, there's the, the pay issue. Absolutely. And then like, you know, there's, there are some, like they, like the stories with the saints of mm -hmm. having to be forced to sell calendars yeah. Yeah. and, you know, she, the one, the one of the girls got fired for a picture on Instagram. Right. Um, how much of that, I guess, culture exists, really exists in, um, I, I, well, you would know about yeah, the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I mean, I can speak on, on my experience, and I've heard some of the lawsuits. You know, some of the the girls that had to do inappropriate things with right. mm -hmm. sponsors. You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's no excuse for, you know what I mean? That, At all. That, yeah. yeah, if that has happened, then that is, you, you, I can't justify that, and I don't want to. I never experienced that on the team. I never knew anybody that had experienced that on the team. Um, I knew the culture was one where they always kind of tried to protect you a little too much maybe in my sense that you were locked into rooms so that you couldn't get out at calendar shoot when they didn't want us going out. But right. it was for our safety and stuff. Um, when it comes to pay, you know, I'll be honest, I think there is room for pay. I mean, I didn't get paid at all for r practices back when I did it did 11 you, but years you got ago. paid to perform? You got paid a little bit for the games. You know, and we had 10 games, and uh, I know that pay has gone up significantly on top of the fact girls do now get paid for practices, for all oh, those times you're practicing. Um, appearances, they get paid a lot more. So there have been baby steps. I think everybody knows there's room for more, and I think any NFL cheerleader would tell you that. Um, and that's probably one of the next steps to change, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't – to me, they're – the cheerleaders are employees of the team. Mm -hmm. So the, the the pay situation to me always blows my mind. Like I don't, I I always get surprised when people are reactionary as opposed to being like, hey, um, we have these girls practicing every night. Yeah. They can't work any other job. It's not like just being like out of the kindness of our heart. Like they literally work here. Mm -hmm. I, there's obviously a lawsuit coming. Yes. Maybe we just pay the people that are working for us. Right. Yeah, and it, and again, it has changed for, at least back in when I did it, the contract we signed is we had to have full-time jobs or mm -hmm. be a full-time student on top of right. being a cheerleader. Right. So it was kind of set in stone when we walked in, this is not your main form of pay. Right. You know, not to mention, we didn't have social media. These girls now, they become, they are on the team and they get 30,000 plus followers mm -hmm. on Instagram overnight, which if you follow a lot of them after, it's career changing for them. They open studios and have an automatic revenue stream coming in. So there's a lot more that they get out now right. than they did just 10 years ago. And you know that it's going to change even more in the next 10 years. Well, was just because social media wasn't around when you were a cheerleader, yeah. how do you think the level of privacy is being invaded with that level of exposure so early, especially with the, the Saints cheerleader who's suing for getting fired for something she posted on social media. Like, I know. Where, where's, where's the line drawn? I was a college athlete and we had all of our tweets and posts monitored mm -hmm. and we had meetings if we tweeted something past midnight. Yep. Uh, so how how is that privacy changed with cheerleaders now in the NFL? I think they're still figuring it out. Mm. You know, I remember a few years ago um, when Twitter was kind of a new thing and I was talking with Kelly and Judy, the director and choreographer of the Cowboys, and they're like, we've never dealt with this before. You know, they had some girls, and the pictures are out there. It was Halloween one year, and uh, they wore some really inappropriate Halloween costumes that made the news. Like, you're talking CNN and stuff. Mm. Right. And the organization is going, we've never had to deal with this before. And so I think they're trying to figure it out just as much as the rest of us are, and right. that in what is it free speech, and these girls can do what they want and not be punished. And then when you're having to represent an organization, right. does it matter what you've done? I, right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem with that kind of control if you're also compensating someone yeah. for their Correct. time. Like, if you want to take over everything, their entire existence pay and me brand. For it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just pay someone for it. Okay. So you also did Dancing with the Stars. I did. Um, you came in third place, right? I came in third my first season. Yeah, and then you won All-Stars. I did. Yeah. Woo! So, can we get one? Um, can we get one? You, you guys are quick? making me sound like I'm a really good dancer. No, no. Uh, no you, <laughs> are, you are. You are. You clearly are. You are a very good dancer. Yes, that's, that's not debatable. Yeah, um, not a question. Clearly a good dancer. Yes. Um, so my brother did Dancing with the Stars. He, uh, yeah, look, I'm it's just, he, he lost to Christian Yamaguchi. You can't beat someone who's, who dances on ice. All right. That's it's a just, true story. Or a gymnast, yeah. I think. Uh, yes. It's just, no. yeah. too agile. you know, I feel like it's unfair. Yeah. They're supposed to be amateurs, I agree. Um, but Not whatever. Win race. Uh, but it was really, really crazy. Yeah. And I want to know what's harder. Cause dancing with the stars, you just you have to learn how to become a ballroom dancer, which, which again, people do for their entire lives. Mm. So in a matter of a couple weeks, mm. so it's just like twelve-hour days of dancing. Um, Jason lost a ton of weight. 
Oh, ridiculous. that was the best part about it. Yeah. Well, losing the weight. Oh, oh yeah. I getting, like, get on getting dancing muscle. with the stars. Yeah. Yes. Not yeah. so much. <laughs> Bill Marcel's twinkle right, toes right, right. Didn't, right. didn't go over the same way. Right. We only made it one week. Right. Um, <laughs> but what was harder, making the Dallas Cowboys squad or preparing Ooh. for Dancing with the Stars? Uh, you know, the cheerleading squad was more intimidating mm. to me because it was more, you know, you're being judged by people right in front of you. Right. You know, I'm dancing and I'm looking at, mm-hmm. at everybody. Whereas Dancing with the Stars, it was cameras. You know, granted, you had an audience, but you couldn't see half the people out there. So it was almost like I'm going out blind. Right. But yeah, no, the cheerleaders. And I, I was younger. And so I probably was a little more immature, maybe. And I, I let the nerves get to me more. But that was definitely scarier. What's What was the best part of Dancing with the Stars? Because to me, uh, I could not believe how how intense it was like in the room mm-hmm. you're talking about like people being right there but the ballroom it's like it's they're, tiny they're it's the size of up. this room right I don't know if I could do it mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm very clumsy you, well I mean like the people you're the audience the is audience right is there. like right on the stage on there this, are people the their feet can I, see, I see I see that but you know I saw Silver Line Playbook and they made it look easy they, yeah. they had a couple weeks to prepare for that <laughs> yes right what a great movie <laughs> What? Like a good what a great movie! <laughs> thank you, thank you so okay, much. Okay, so what's well. uh, what advice do you give girls when they're? I'm sure that they ask you um, about getting becoming a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader because the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader yeah. is is like a staple in sports. Yes. Like they're literally putting the uuniform in the National Museum of American History. I know, History. isn't that cool? By the way, yes. it's good culture. For them. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is a good part of it. Yeah, Yankees. Notre Dame football, you know no, what I'm saying? Notre Dame? Oh Some, yeah, Notre Dame football is like up in there. He went to Notre Dame for like five years. Oh, is that why? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say that's four years. That's a random You are one. so picky when you want to claim Notre Dame <laughs> and when you don't. And it's my decision. <laughs> okay, I decide Our when I claim Notre Dame. true fans, don't they do the Notre Dame thing? Yeah, uh, no, I don't, I don't no, know. I don't know what true there, fans do. But, but <laughs> I don't know what true fans do. I, I play football there. I don't know what they did. I don't know. But anyways, yes, anyway, it's Staples. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what advice do you give girls that are about to try out? Um, uh, now, my advice, I think, has changed over the years. Mm. Now I, I look at the girls and I'm like, you just need to be you. You know, this team wants a whole bunch of different people that can represent basically all facets. Um, find what your strength is that's individual to you. Don't try to be necessarily the prettiest one, the fittest one, the best dancer. Um, be you. Bring something unique to the table. And I think that's what they want now is kind of well-rounded girls to make the team. So Dallas Cowboys cheerleader making the team premieres Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Pacific on CMT. Before we let you go, yep. The Bachelor. Yeah. Uh, tell us Woo! something Something behind the scenes people don't know about The Bachelor. Something you have to ask me a specific question. There's mm. so many things y'all don't know. Let's see. <laughs> okay, yeah, like oh, yeah, that's <laughs> all right. Well, hmm. I want to. What? No, I can't. The guys like. Wh- I'm not under contract anymore. I just I don't. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. We're going, yeah. Okay, so we, we were doing some research. Yeah. All right. Okay. It looked kind of like you wanted to to smack a shit out of him on the couch, yeah. like. Oh yeah, God! Y'all watch that? Oh, Jason! Yeah, 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 yeah. Did yeah, it yeah, cross yeah. your mind? Yeah, we ain't messing with Jason. Yeah, no, yeah. never. No? Oh, no. look at you. Well, of course. No. No. Oh no, we're definitely not. Safe zone yeah. here. Yeah. Well. Um. Did I want to hit him? Yes. Yeah. Mm. But I was in a really tight dress that they made me put on before it was. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I wasn't even my dress. They like, knew it was, it was coming. They yeah. said, Jay, you tried to put you in like a tight dress. They didn't like the outfit that I brought. The they gave me, your, they, they they gave me that moved. thing, shoved the ring on my finger, and threw me out on stage. Oh, oh, oh my God. I laughed, I mean, it's, it's Okay, terrible. so it's, it's reality like it's reality show it's love, obviously, but like... How, at what point are there actual real feel, feel, feelings about Because I... You know what? I can't just... I'm not the Sharon type... Right. So it ain't for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can't, like, no, all these bitches gotta go. So, <laughs> it's, well, so, okay, right that's actually where the mental state goes, I think, after, because you're in such a bubble, first of all. You have no media, no right. phones, TV, radio. We didn't even know President Obama was nominated or was elected while I was on it. We didn't know that until after I was off the show. Still in the culture, you don't know. Um, on, and ABC. so you're like in this hypersensitive world mm-hmm. where you've got people around you going, oh, he really likes you, he really likes you. And you're like, oh, my God, he really likes me. But then something, it it's almost becomes a competition of like, I just don't want to go home now yeah. and I don't want to be rejected. And in that world and culture, it's almost hard to differentiate what is real right now and what is this weird mm. alternate reality right. so they just like over. isolate you basically but yeah absolutely you only live in the house for a week and a half and then you're in hotel rooms by yourself the rest of the time so but going in you know that this is what the 
the situation is. So do you go in like I didn't? But I mean, you oh, know, you're yeah. going to be on a competition oh, show yes, with yeah, other women. Like, part, do you yeah. go in like just suspending any? So I, I don't know if you're a jealous person, but like. For me, it's a guaranteed fight. So, like, I, I'm, I'm a guy or I'm the wrong person. Geared, too. I'm, She's I'm like, more like I'm more geared for uh, like flavor of love. Right, more, right, right. More of my style of how yeah. I'm gonna get down. You would fight with somebody who's not even getting a rose. Yes. Like they're, gonna right, get, right. Yeah, they're gonna get escorted right, out yeah, from like, drinking wait, too much. She's off now? Like, okay, <laughs> right, well, yeah, I, I, yeah. But I still got words for her on the way out though, because we ain't done yet. <laughs> but like, did you suspend <laughs> that going in? Um, I no, I didn't, and and. I was on The Bachelor even longer than I was on, you know, longer ago than I was on dancing and, and CMT and all of that. It was it was forever ago, and nobody really knew what the world of reality TV was, what right. you were getting was into. And in my mind, I was going through another breakup. These these are things that happen to me when I go through breakups. I became a oh. cheerleader, and then I went on the show to be the, on The Bachelor. Oh, my gosh. I was just looking to kind of get out of Dallas and say, where else, what else can I do? I'm not, I'm not succeeding right here in life. Um, and then one thing led to another, led to another, and wow. here I am. Well, I mean, it was, it was so you consider it a good decision, obviously. Oh, it was. I mean, yeah, it was humiliating, absolutely, but it was all completely worth it. And I think we all ended up fine. We ended up where we were supposed to yeah, be anyway, right? For sure. Yeah. Yes. I know. I. I... Life's At least it happened to me before social media. I didn't. Yes. There was no yeah. social oh, yes. media back yeah. then. Now yeah. I can't even. Could I can't you imagine? imagine? No. Right. They uh, have uh, like NCAA tournament style brackets now. Yeah. Oh, it's for a whole sure. Thing. Yeah. Podcast. It's a whole thing. All, yes. all on Bachelor. Um, yeah. yeah. So yes, it. doing it before mm-hmm. social media yeah. was was the move for yes. sure. Well, thank you so much for going for joining us Thanks, again, uh, yeah, Melissa. You. you can catch her on Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team on CMT. Uh, this was super fun. Do I get to sign the wall now for being the first? Yes. Well, we're gonna. Literally yeah. on the wall, but Email we get to fill out a, a maybe I'm crazy um, name. Name, name tag, tag thing, and we can put yes. it on the, on the wall. Yes. Of fame. Yes. Awesome. And you're yes. gonna get your it's own fine. special frame because you yeah. are our first female guest. Yes. 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 Looking forward to that. I just made that up, but we are going to do. <laughs> no, that. now, now it's happening. <laughs> I was thinking about that. the frame colors. Yes, <laughs> not doing pink. Although we have purple. So, what's your favorite color? Blue. Perfect. Blue it is. Done. There you go. All right. Thanks. All right, that was fun. Thanks so much to Melissa for joining us. It's now time for would it or quit it. Quit it. With it? Quit it. What? With it. We about to turn up in this bitch. All right, what am I winning or quitting today? NFL's new helmet rule is a complete mess. The league hopes to clear up confusion on the new rule with a video tutorial filled with NFL preseason footage demonstrating the right and wrong way for players to use their helmets. This video is being directed by the vice president of officiating and is to be studied by referees, coaches, and players all before week one happens. Joy this new helmet rule with it or quit it i mean definitely definitely with it yeah definitely with it here's the thing i i understand and i very much appreciate that the nfl is trying to make the game safer I don't. but at the end of the day um well when you have a multi-billion dollar lawsuit that you have to deal with you tend to overreact yes um, or just react in general Mm. and that's that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Like there, it's it's hard to convince uh, young parents to let their kids play football. Right. Uh, when I have a child, if I have a son who wants to play football, I'm not going to let him play football until he's much older. My brothers didn't play. My, Jason didn't play football at all until his junior year of high school. My younger really? brother didn't play tackle until he was maybe 12. Uh, so really, and, and look, it's it's a collision sport. So there's only yeah. so much danger you can take out of it. You've got full giant grown men full of testosterone running full speed into each other at a high rate of speed. Like there's going on purpose. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Intentionally. Yeah. So there's there's going to be some injuries mm-hmm. and there's going to be some head injuries. That's why they wear the giant helmets. And like it, that's that is what it is. And look, what they don't want to see happen is Ryan Shazier. Right. They don't want Eric Legrand. They don't want these situations where people are permanently damaged. And that's just part of the risk of this game. It is, like that is part of it. I mean, but they're always they're always going to be permanently damaged in some way, shape, or form. Sure, that, and that's, the confusion that's, around it is is confusing me as as to what version of football people actually want to see because it's almost as if Bill O'Reilly was making his show to to better suit Bill Maher fans. It's like what football is, you got you see the connection? We're cha- we're trying to make you're doing football. a bit of, you're doing a bit of a Gruden uh analogy to, there. I thought it was I thought it was a Colin Cowherd. Uh we're trying to take you're trying to take you're trying to take football and make it for a 
base that is that not wants, a football base. It's not sure. football base. Okay, but this is the problem. You you do have those situations, and there is an outcry, and there was a billion dollar lawsuit. So uh, the 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 thing that stands out to me is how quickly and rashly they made this decision. So Dean Blandino was on with Colin Coward on the herd. You can catch me on the herd as well. So uh, um, on FS1. And he said it was just basically a, a quick decision that they made, like a, some owners right. a, in a room with the commissioner or whatever, and just decided that this was the new rule, which is not the way that they create rules. They, they work with the NFLPA. Right. And the, the thing I don't like Plus about two. the rule is it's, it's much like the catch rule. I don't understand it. And there's not even just that rule. They're also enforcing this ridiculous Aaron Rodgers rule where you aren't allowed to land on the quarterback when you sack them. And it, I am not one. I don't need extra violence. There's plenty of violence in, in, in my life. I just find some television all day long. Yeah. There, there's, there's murders and commercials. Okay. Yeah. Like the there's, there's, there's plenty yeah. of violence. I don't mm-hmm. need to see it. But it's, it's a fundamental part of the game to sack the quarterback. Huge it's a part fundamental of part of the game to tackle someone. Yes. And if someone is lower, if a running back is lowering their head, what are you supposed to do? Get plowed over? I just, I understand that they're overcalling it right now in the preseason, which I like because I want them to get it right. I just don't know how yeah. they're going to enforce it during the regular season because it's it's impossible to change your body in a half a second while you're moving at the rate of speed that they are. And so I just don't, I don't like that it's going to t- change the outcome of games, take money out of people's pockets. I'm fully for endorsing obvious helmet to helmet, dirty plays. Right. For sure. Right. Cool. Get that out. Bad. It's intentional. There's yes. no need for it. Helmet it doesn't help weapon. anybody. It doesn't right. make you tougher. Fine. Get rid of those. But this, this bumping him on the shoulder and now all of a sudden it's the guy gets thrown out of the game it's insane and i don't know how they're going to en- enforce it yeah so definitely f- that rule i mean i'm i'm glad i'm not playing football right now obviously at this age if i was playing football still there are were millions glad? of dollars are you glad you're not playing football oh my i'm obviously i'm glad yes yes yeah. no qualms about that's nice of you to football. say that you'd rather be sitting across from me doing this podcast instead of making million dollars i mean just, dollars well NFL. yeah well just period playing football is very difficult afterwards you feel like you get in a car accident mm. and that, that hurts that is the trade-off to making millions right. of dollars but coaching i don't know how you coach football with this new helmet rule right. when i came up as until i stopped playing football your helmet was used as a weapon and it was supposed to use it as a weapon you use it use it to get the ball out you do it to get a player out from a series like it's taught in the see, violence see, of the that game. See, that I don't endorse. I, 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 but that's why I, I'm... It's the whole, perfectly the fine. sweep the leg mentality, I don't endorse that. But you can... But I'm saying the non-endorsement of that is the non-endorsement of football in my mind. And this new version of it, they need to take a year out and sit out and decide how they're going to play this new football game because how football is originally played. Hard nose, use of helmet as a weapon, FSH up. That's a very knuckle-dragger take of you. How? Did you hear anything I just said? Yes, I heard all of it. I, <laughs> that's your take on the matter. And I, this is I, mine. I, okay, but that is my critique of your hey, case. How's it, how's it? I don't understand. It's knuckle dragger. Of course, dragger. it's knuckle dragger. Oh, take him out the game. Sweep the leg. No mercy. Yes, no mercy. Okay. If you're going to play football, well, that's changed. That yeah, I that that, change that I agree mercy. with. That I agree with. The the, the over calling of this this helmet rule and the squishing of the quarterbacks. I do not agree with. Like you you can't eliminate defense from the game, which I understand they're trying to generate more offense because that is what audiences want. That's what the NBA is doing. Uh, It's what makes MLB great is watching home runs. So uh, I I get it, but I don't like it. (laughs) that rule. All right, next. Kevin Love has become the unofficial spokesperson for mental health in the NBA. The cast forward has been vocal recently about seeking professional help to manage his anxiety on and off the court. Jackie McMullen is now reporting that some NBA owners would like to access to their players' full mental health records. They are investing millions of dollars in these athletes. Joy, NBA owners should have access to the players' mental health records. Quit it or quit it. Uh, absolutely quit it. What? I'm usually with most of the things that the NBA does. Yes. And for the most part, I'm okay with it because they, they have a good relationship with their players and they they empower their players, mm-hmm. and they have guaranteed contracts the and things. a very strong players' union. Right. However, mental health is something that is very difficult to talk about. Of course, it can be embarrassing for people. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still a stigma that if you like, get therapy, that you're crazy. Which obviously, I don't have a problem uh, talking about. No, but of course. especially for men, mm-hmm. it it's it can be a paralyzing thing to be like, hey, you know, I'm depressed. You feel like 
oh, I'm soft or you're going to be judged. And it can be something as simple as a just a chemical imbalance, not something right. that you've even done wrong. Or there's some unresolved issues from your childhood yes. that you need to deal with. Mm-hmm. And professional sports is incredibly stressful, mm-hmm. not just physically, but mentally and yeah. emotionally. And you're dealing with the entire world watching and critiquing everything that you do. And you've got a family and you've got relationships to deal with and you've got money things to deal with and everyone from your home is trying to to take money from you and get your time. Like, why can you not speak to a therapist? What like the idea that the NBA has a right to this type of private files to help not themselves, not not the player, not to help figure out how to best help the player, but to use it to critique of whether they are someone who is draftable or will work with their team, that I don't endorse. Now, you can spin it that maybe they do want to know that so that they can help them. But look, none of us are new here, okay? We know that this information always generally is presented as like, oh yeah, we really want to know this so we can help the players, and it ends up being something else. So I do think that players already have a complete exposure down to the injuries that they have in AAU. Right. Down to injuries that they're, things that that are hereditary with their parents. Yes. Like there has to be some level of privacy that these guys have, and mm. this is something that I think really, really actually affects people. And espe- yeah. and and these particular players on another level, considering the demographic the demographic of the backgrounds that these players are coming from. Jackie McMullen did a huge story, multiple stories right. on mental health in the NBA, talking about the Morris twins and mm-hmm. all the pressure that you deal with growing up, coming from low-income neighborhoods yeah. and not having a stable home. Yeah. Like, that's DeRozan's isn't just something you out. just get over. Yeah, right. DeMar DeRozan's talking yeah. about it. Like, you just grow up not trusting people. Now, all of a sudden, you have all these people around you you're supposed to deal with. I guess there's a lot of pressure. You should be allowed to have access to mental health uh, outlets without the stigma and without it being on public record for the NBA. They're making big decisions about how to invest in these players. And if there is a physical combine to figure out where someone is at physically, I don't understand why having access to these things to make a better decision about long-term decisions surrounding how much money you give this certain player. I mean, you can look at Derrick Rose and his and his mental state and how it's been in flux since he's been in the NBA. If someone had access to those they would make more informed decisions i don't think it should be public record but there's a lot of things that these nba owners know about their players before they draft them that we don't know about sure but there has they're still human beings at the end of the day they're not they're not like robots and chess pieces we talk about them in the abstract when it comes to sports and there is another level to all of this that's not that's beyond the physical like there's a reason why we talk about organizations being systems and having good leadership and intangibles and body language like there's all those all those things play as elements in whether a player or whether a team is going to work and they should be allowed to have some level of privacy there's already I, enough stigma with coming out that's why those the, that was such a big deal kevin love right. talking about that and demar Derozan. like it, there's a stigma attached no, to it been, that's hard enough to break through that let alone to just ha- turn that over to nba owners yeah you're right i, I think you're yeah you, you're taking the more pessimistic route, and I understand that. I was, I guess, I was thinking more optimistically about. Oh, you mean nothing using, is real? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just like taking the information and making making accurate decisions off of it that would help. Like, I've struggled with mental health before, and I wish that the Notre Dame coaches or people recruiting had more access to those records coming out of high school, so they would make better decisions about how they recruit me, how they talk to me, how they how they deal with these athletes. But obviously, that's like a, a special situation and stuff. But I, I don't know. I I think it's. Any, any more access will always be good and bad, right? Uh, more is not always the best. Yeah. Okay. Less is more. Is that what they say? Less is more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I okay. agree with that here. We'll right. use it right now and move on. Uh, <laughs> the Browns, a.k.a. the NFL's new favorite franchise, was recently endorsed by the king of content, LeBron James. Mm-hmm. AP sports writer Tom Withers questioned if the Browns could handle having personalities like Des Bryant and Flash Gordon on the same roster. LeBron tweet said, it's time to change the culture, which the head coach been doing, and bringing players that can win games and make plays helps. Why not? Joy, LeBron loves Browns fans more than he loves the Browns. Wit it or quit it. Wit it. Yes. Um, gotcha. Because LeBron is a Cowboys fan. He <laughs> likes he likes America's team. And a Yankees fan. He likes America's team. And he was once a Bulls fan. He like he liked good teams. So LeBron is a front runner. 
Which he is, is fine. Because he is. Which is fine. It's in his blood. I hate say. fan police, okay? Yes. So I don't want to be fan police. Right. You can be a sports fan however it is you like. Exactly. If you want to bandwagon jump, mm -hmm. if you want to uh, just be a fan of all the best teams, mm -hmm. that's totally fine with me. I don't care. Just don't try and come to me with some ferocious loyal take if that's what you do. Like, if you're going to be a rider, be a rider. If you're going to be right. a frontrunner, be a frontrunner. LeBron's a frontrunner. He yes. doesn't care about the Browns. We know that. He's a Cowboys fan. However, and, and I mean, obviously, because he's endorsing Des Bryant. So, I mean. <laughs> Duh. But what I will yeah. say about okay, his take, yeah, I see the now. his take, mm -hmm. I do think that Dez would work in Cleveland. I yeah. think um, the teams are sort of waiting now, so they don't feel obligated. They don't feel obligated. Don't they aren't literally obligated to pay Dez if he yeah. ends up being a problem for their team. So that's unfortunate for Dez. I know Dez is kind of like drumming up this narrative that he's making all the decisions. Right. But I don't know. I don't know that I believe that. Can't be the case. Um, but as far as having a bunch of different characters and building a culture and all that, I, look, Le LeBron can do that. LeBron can have Lance Stevenson and JaVale McGee and yeah. Rondo and mm -hmm. Lonzo and Kuzma mm -hmm. all on a team together. Right. Because it's LeBron and he's proven and he's the greatest and he is a team guy and he's everybody's friend, as we know. Okay. What okay. Do you mean? Okay. Yes. I mean, Channing Fry just talked about how you know being difficult playing with LeBron. Well, so yeah, like, that's because it's it is hard to play right, with LeBron. Right. I didn't say it was easy to play with LeBron. Yes, I'm saying course. as far as a team guy, mm -hmm. that's what LeBron is. We right. know that. Yes, and of course it's hard to play with LeBron. He's the great. It's hard to play with Kevin Durant. It's hard to play with Russell Westbrook. Guess what? Yeah. It's hard to play with a great player. Mm -hmm. They yeah. need the ball a lot. Yeah. They get a lot of the attention. They want to make the plays. That's what makes them great. Yeah. So look, I get it, but. This, this whole idea that they're going to build a culture based around Des Bryant is not, mm, no. Yeah. No. Or yeah. for that matter, Tyrod. Like, I, I, I okay, always sound no. like I'm banging on Tyrod. I'm really not. I just think that the Browns have been so bad, so fucking awful for yes. so long. Yes. That just really, really, really just the worst absolute bad I that you could possibly yes. be. Ever, because yes. I know we're uh, we're super high on this Browns hype train right now. I just want to remind everyone: the Browns have historically been the worst team, maybe in all of sports. Yeah. So, in order to change the culture from that, you really, really, really got to change the culture. Which is why Hugh Jackson wants to start Tyrod because he wants to establish winning. You can't you can't let losing linger. I get it, right? Like once you get used to losing, you are going to keep losing because it's normal to you, right? You have to yeah. hate losing. Even if you are a loser, like, trust me, the the year the Dolphins went 1-15 was one of the worst years of my life. It was not a pleasant time in the Taylor household. And that is because Jason's not a loser, so he was miserable. It wasn't like we got to week 10 and he was like, oh, well. <laughs> this was bad the whole time. <laughs> nah. One of my favorite George Taylor faces. I mean, this is not how it works. You have yeah. to have a you have to have it instilled in you that winning is the only option. It yes. has to bother you yes. to lose. So I that's not been the case. So the, the culture is being changed with that by setting a standard of easing them into a winning mentality. I think putting Baker out there putting making letting Baker start is like putting your your franchise, your season on the whims of the emotions of a rookie quarterback. I, I know he. I know he's the first overall pick, but when you have a, a rock like Tyrod Taylor, who's thinking about coaching the coaches as much as he's talking about coaching the players, he's trying to bring winning mentality and let it breed. Let a year of that breeding into the locker room, so even Baker Mayfield can take the next step and use his athletic ability and talents to take the the foundation that Tyrod Taylor built and take the Browns to a a decent football team like the Ravens. Mm -hmm. It sounds nice, but he's gonna be starting week five. Speaking of speaking of winning mentality, we went to UCLA yesterday. Yes, to the Student Activity Center, it, and it was pretty amazing. It was, if you are a Hooper, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Uh, yeah. It Basically, was we very watched lit. Kevin Durant. Yep. James Harden, mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook. Yep. LeBron uh, James is in the corner. LeBron James is in the corner. Uh, PG thirteen. Uh, yeah. Paul George. Paul George was the entire was, Raptors team. Damn near. No, no, no. Literally the no, entire Raptors okay, squad. Okay, yeah. It was, it was everybody. Everybody. No. Everybody required. Just well, yes. No, yes. No, everybody Kyle, no Kyle Lowry. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No Kyle Lowry. No and, Kyle and, Warren and, or and, 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 It was. It was. And, and no Kawhi. Outside of Steph. Let me Curry. not misrepresent our experience. It was just Kevin Durant, James Harden, <laughs> Paul George, <laughs> yes, and Russell Westbrook. Yes. It was. Braun and watching. Braun watching. Yes, Braun watching. Let me not exaggerate. Yes. Yeah. In this. In this. In this three court gym. Uh, yeah, was, so all, they're all just playing pickup, by the way. Yeah, just playing pickup. Five of the last, or no, four of the last five MVPs. MVPs. Everybody, like everybody but Steph. Was, 
Steph Curry was yeah, Steph Curry doing wasn't interviews. There. It, it was, wasn't there. Just watching. It was just James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and Paul George. I mean, okay. Let me just tell you how how what happened. I was there, and it was crazy. Yes, <laughs> that's that's how it, it was. Like it was it was like I was there. Honestly, I had to actively like I, we were standing up against the I wall, and I had to here. actively not stand there like this. Yes. Yes. I forgot because something. I had to check my face. Like I think I don't know what you guys were doing because I wasn't looking at your faces, but I I, I had to actively be like. Russell Westbrook was as far as you are to me. He's huge. Just and snatching, climbing he, ladders, just d- cramming with ease. Yes. When someone dunks, it's like, oh, it's a dunking fest now. Dunk fest. <laughs> and and <laughs> I, I said to I said to Brandon and Heller, I, I I'm it's hard to now LeBron wasn't out there uh, playing pickup, so I, maybe I'm, I would feel differently. <sighs> but listen, I've seen LeBron play in person, but watching these guys play pickup is a different experience. Oh my god. Kevin Durant was the tallest human on any of the courts. Easy he is insane. Was, he How was, can he shoot and move like that? He's the tallest person on any of the court. Like, and in the building. Honestly, James Harden was lost in that crowd. He was he wasn't doing a bunch of shooting, but the fact that like everyone standing out, he's like, oh, oh, shit, this oh is yeah, James, James Harden. Harden's here. Oh, this is James. Yeah, oh, oh Andre MVP. Drummond. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, Danny Green. Oh, oh yeah, Danny Green was there too. I, I, I finally understand the Sorry, Kevin Durant. Rich Paul. The, the Kevin Durant as a unicorn take always seemed like, okay, you guys, like, calm down. No. Yeah, he, he, no. That's a mythical creature. Yes. Nah. No. Yes. He's mythical. He oh, is. He's and out there. Break some news. Him and Russell, Russell Westbrook are friends. Yeah, they are friends. They're pals. They're, 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 they're friends. beautiful. I almost they're cried. They're Everyone was talking shit to each other, but yes. they were friends. Yeah, in the best way. In the way friends do. Uh, yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, baby. We love you. Uh, well, I'm calling you baby, not Heller. Oh, yeah. 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 Mr. Watson, thank, sir. Thank oh, Earl. Yeah. The mayor. Watson, the mayor. Yeah, the mayor of that gym. Oh, yes. For real. Yes. yes. Everyone, everyone has to come by and shake Earl's hand. Oh, my God. When Rich Paul said bye to Earl, I was like, what? I heard like three different people call him different nicknames, too. Oh, my God. All the nicknames. Oh, my God. DJ, yeah. yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's a lot of us. Perks. <laughs> <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. College coaches are petty. Ooh. All college coaches except for Nick Saban are petty, yeah. actually, to be more specific. Yeah. And I won't back down. CBS Sports did this installment called Candid Coaches, yes. and they interviewed this person, um, this anonymous person, who uh, called out Nick Saban, who's coming off his sixth national championship. Um, to be clear, I am not a Saban fan. Okay, I'm not good. an Alabama fan. Okay, yeah. I am. This is my person opinion. Okay. Yes. I like UM. I like Pitt. Those are my teams. Good. Um, I am not rooting for Alabama when I make any of these statements that follow any of the mouth noises that come out of my mouth right now. Okay. So this anonymous person said, if you count cheating. Mm. and getting the best players in the country as part of running a program, he's the best in the country. It's like saying an NFL coach is the best in the league if he gets 25 first-round picks every year. Okay, first of all, we all know how I feel about loser talk. Yes. Okay, I'm out on loser talk. Is it? It's super loser talk. I, the 25 first picks things is crazy. It's like you're not chill. Like, please, chill with your take. But he's not wrong. For Which part person. is he not wrong about? I mean, he said cheating. We don't. That's very blanketed. We can't. We can't say that he's not cheating. I can't say that he's not cheating, but I can't say that he is cheating. And if you're gonna go out and make an anonymous statement like Nick Saban's cheating, put your name on it. Yeah. Be about that life. Yeah. Or keep it pushing. Mm. Like talking about cheating, you're accusing Nick Saban of cheating. Nick Saban. Is taking that ass. So I don't want to hear about he's cheating. Like cheating at what? Cheating at recruiting? Uh yeah, no. He he because he's I mean, cheating at what? I, I don't we don't know. Cheating at what? I, there's a I'll say this. As a former college football player, there are plenty of ways that you can cheat in an organization as the head coach. Name them. Not, well, name the like a breaking name, name the ways you can cheat. Break, breaking breaking regulated out hours of work. Hmm. 
Okay. They can only you can only meet for X amount of hours a day. Ooh. There are rules to get around that. That's cheating if you don't do follow those rules. Uh, there's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of NCAA NCAA handbook is yes, so big. The NCAA rule book is ginormous. Yes, and lots of people have broken the bajillion rules that the NCAA yes. has for these amateur athletes. All I'm saying is, if you're going to accuse Nick Saban of cheating, what is he cheating at? And as far yes. as the recruiting thing, yes. yeah, if I'm the number one player in the country, I want to go to the number one school that's going to get me to the NFL right. with a coach that's going to be there all four years where I'm going to be in a situation where I have great alumni and great facilities and I'm going to play on national television for a national championship. Level up, bro. All I'm saying is, I mean, yeah, listen, like, I don't I don't like Nick Saban more than the next person, but they're, they're winners. Like, Winners do what winners do, and losers do what losers do. Losers complain and call other people cheating and complain about him getting all the. I get all the best players. It's not fair. Okay, okay. That, so that's that's the part where I, I do disagree with this person because all everything you just said is exactly what they told me to get me to Notre Dame. Go to the NFL, graduate. Notre Dame alumni, all this stuff, life set. They were wrong about a lot of things because they because they lie in the recruiting process. But Nick Saban didn't always recruit great players. He recruited me. To, so his, his second year into the into into Alabama, up, I got a full ride Nick scholarship. Nick Saban is so smart. This is yes. full genius. Nick Saban yes. almost had Brandon Newman on his squad. <laughs> Just miss me with the Nick with the whole Nick Saban gets all the best players and, and, and look maybe he's just a better recruiter than you. I know Jim Harbaugh's no climbing way. up trees and no drinking way milk he's and better steak. recruiting than than John, Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh recruited me at Stanford. I was ready to go fight for Jim Harbaugh. I was, I was Nick Saban. When I got, I was like Nick Saban, Miami. I'm gonna go play for Miami's old coach. Oh, that's a good choice by you. Yeah, exactly. Well I don't even yeah. want to go down that rabbit hole. Right. But the point is. Just I, I can't stand loser talk. It's the same thing that people do with the Warriors. Just, oh, these have all the best players. Of course, they're going to win. And then Kevin Durant in there. It's unfair. And they're just cheaters. And I just not like it's ruining the NBA. It's just not fair. It's not. But I hear you. It, it's fairs not. for what I tell you. I know it's for fried. Fried ho hos and funnel cake. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Life yeah. is not fair. Yeah. All right. And and if you want to be a winner, mm -hmm. then think as winners do. Right. So instead of him coming out and saying they cheat and they get the best players, say Nick Saban is a great court, a, a great coach and a great recruiter, and he does all the right things. We should be doing more of what Nick Saban does because obviously what you're doing isn't working, Brosif. Yeah, anonymous coach. I mean, I'm just saying, like, no, I, if you're anonymous, you're yeah. gonna come out and say an anonymous stuff. This is this is the response that I'm gonna give you. If he got all the 25 first round picks ever, he'd be, then of course everyone would be say he's the best. It's not fair. <laughs> It's the best. Hey, right now, by the I, way. And this bothers me the You know why this bothers me the most? Because I'm why? put in a position where I have to defend Nick Saban. Yeah, that it is. infuriates me. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? What I'm, are you doing? I'm anonymous. I'm bothered. Informant. What, oh, by the way, it was, it's, it's, you brought up fried Oreos and frontal cakes and ho-hos. It's oh. fair. It's fair season. I just want to shout out state oh, yeah. fair season because my Instagram is popping with Kentucky State Fair mm. pictures. Everybody's getting clean. In their little summer outfits, going to state fair, get eaten by goats. See, we, we, huh? Goats. They eat people at state fairs. Sweet. Yeah. Um, are they like giant goats? No, it's not. We no, had a no, giant no. animal discussion oh, yesterday no, that no, was we can't, we really can't. amazing. I think we're right. I think it we're was, good do on we time. Have time. I don't think Maybe we do. Maybe we'll say for next week. Yes. It's a really, really good conversation. It involves giant animals. Right. And if you guys ain't got any giant animal stories, send that to me. Yes. Okay. MIC podcast dot com. If you have proof of the giant animal, it would be better. Yes. Uh, then oh, yes. Be Pictures and video of giant animals, please. Giant. Yeah. Not like elephants. Like literally. Yes. A, yes. Come like on now. Normal, like a ghost that could a eat a person. Whale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> We're not worried about that. We're talking about like literal animals that are normal Mutations. size. That are mutated into yes. giant animals. Yes. And we will maybe have that discussion. Ninja turtles. Turtles in a half shell. Yeah. Turtles in a half shell. What's that? Rocket. <laughs> All right, listen, 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 listen. Let's get it. Just keep going. Yeah, yeah, I got okay. you. Yeah, I'm power through. Let's listen. Let's listen. Yeah. It's it. At the night show. Ooh. All right, Kobe Bean Bryant. Mm. Uh, is lit this week for multiple reasons. One, uh, he did the thing where he makes more money off of the money. Um, yes, he everybody loves that. He invested six million in body armor. It's mm -hmm. quite delicious, actually. Really? Uh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, I, they said they sent me some a while back. They sold it uh, as the a healthy version of Gatorade, so I was like, there's no way that's good. Um, no, it's very tasty. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, it's now worth uh, an estimated 200 million. So that's how you come up. Mm. Uh, and he's earned about 680 million during his 20 year career with the Lakers. Man, 680 million. That's a lot of money. Um, so anyway, congrats to you, Kobe, for that. Yes. And according to Basketball Society's Brandon Robinson, aka Scoop B, Kobe will be playing in the Big Three next year. Which, if that happens, <clears throat> we're playing to the basketball gods that it does. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be in Fuego. Way go. Yes, do that. The big so meme. apparently uh Jeff, uh the league co fan founder, uh said it during the weekly weekly conference call. Yes. So th- we have not had it. have we had another confirmed source of this yet? We're working on it. Cool. I, I, I think I wanted Kobe to play in a few years. I'm ready to see him now. You ready now? He will mess the big three up. KG will come out of retirement or and go to big three I like mean, it's, that. It's going to be the, it's going to be uh, the ripple effect of all. Oh time. my gosh! Very excited about that. Three all on right. three, full court. When Kobe gets there, no, I'm still going to be. I'm still. Gonna be, I think they're going to keep the rules the same. We have an update. Ashley has an update. His rep just told TMZ Sports that he is 100 not playing in the. So big he's three. in. All right. So Three's he's company. definitely in. Definitely yes, definitely he's is going to <laughs> be so Kobe Big means, Three. Yeah, that's Get it tatted Kobe, on you. Kobe, 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 Kobe. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. Wait a minute. Kobe. You said Kobe made 680 million dollars mm-hmm. uh, while he played at Lakers. Didn't LeBron sign a billion dollar Nike deal? I don't know. If you want to be the goat. Okay, I just you know sure. you might you might need a few more years, Kobe. Yeah, um, I'm totally kidding. Uh, <laughs> so that was a joke. Uh, so that great. that was a joke. Um, but we like to speak things into existence. So yes. I believe I'm going to we are going to manifest uh, yes. Kobe into playing the big three mm-hmm. next year. All right, John Gruden is back in the NFL mm. um, or Chucky, whatever you t- choose to go by. Um, and he's reportedly making $100 million, speaking of lots of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sat down with Peter King and said he's not making $100 million, which, <laughs> I don't, which I have no idea what that means. He's um, not. Uh, what? He's not making what they say that they gave him. How no. How much is he making? $98 million? He's probably thinking like, he's probably like, I'm not making that this year. I don't know what he's talking about, yeah. but he, he he further confused me by saying, I never thought Tom Cruise movies were any good, but he's making plenty of money. There's a lot of things I don't understand. No disrespect to Tom Cruise. I'm sure he's a great actor. What the f*** are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. But it doesn't matter because this is exactly. This is so Gruden. And we're going to get this all year. And it's excellent content. And I love it. And I I, I encourage everyone to continue putting microphones in front of John Gruden. Because this is what we're going to get. Now, let's break this down. I'm not making $100 million. Yes, you are. I have never thought that Tom Cruise movies were any good. But he's making plenty of money. What are you saying? What does that have to do with you making $100 million or not making $100 million? Are you saying that you're not good so you don't deserve $100 million? What are you saying? It makes sense what he's saying. There's a lot of things I don't understand, clearly. And no disrespect to Tom Cruise. Never disrespect Tom Cruise. Because um, he is in a cult. Uh, oh, and, okay, yes. That is why we don't. And they will come get you. And we live yes. in LA. Yes. And just, if anyone in the cult's listening, cult I would land. just say that. I'm yes. totally kidding. You guys yeah. are a legit organization would you watch cult land like gangland the show would I watch cult, cult, land? Land? cult land like the show uh i would watch cult land Hell yeah watch cult land i mean they have sh- they have sh- cult documentaries about, but like um, imagine cult cults. land yeah i don't know i all, all i know is all i know is i'm i'm you're not i'm not the one you want okay like i'm right. gonna bail i'm a huge bailer okay right. oh yeah um Out of plus here. also i love jesus so <laughs> Shouts out. And I'm sure he's a great actor. Yeah, I think Tom Cruise is considered to be a great actor. Now, Colin Coward is much higher on this new Mission Impossible than I am. He has it in his top 10 movies of all time. I can't tell Insane. if he's trying to campaign Tom Cruise to come on the show, and that's what this is all about. Because it's, it's a good movie. I can't say it's a very good movie. That'd be a it's big a little guess. Movie. Hey, y'all got a couch. We do have the couch. Ooh. Um, oh, he does like to jump on the couch. Yeah. Yes. That yes. was a while ago, though. Yes. That was when he was in love. Shouts out, Auntie um, I don't... Mm, uh, look, here's the thing. Uh, Mission Impossible Fallout's a watchable movie. Okay, it's good, <laughs> and I'm gonna spoil it for, for everyone. What happened? He saves the day. Oh, okay, he alive when he saves the day? Uh, maybe. Oh, he's gonna be alive and save the day. Maybe. Well, maybe he won't. Who knows? You have to oh, watch. Gosh. Um, but it's Mission got 97 percent of Rotten Tomatoes, which is a fucking joke. Okay, everyone, damn relax. Okay, there's no way that the new Mission Impossible is 97 percent. 
Okay. I used to live my life by Rotten Tomatoes. Just chill out. Space Jam is 38%. Yeah. Stop doing that. When you said the Friday, would you say it on her today? Friday. Sharknado has a better rating on, on Rotten Tomatoes than Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's when I was out. So they're either racist or incompetent. You take your choice. Okay. I that prefer is racist and just keep looking. That at is them. impossible. And listen, Sharknado is a perfectly watchable movie if you like watching nonsense, which I do. Mm. But it's not better than Friday. Which is other versions of nonsense. What Great are they? Nonsense. I think. Um, I think Above the Rim is like fifty three percent. Yeah, they are. Tupac's yeah. in that movie. <laughs> so just stop it. Just stop That's it. The greatest thing okay. ever. Anyway, uh, shout out to John Gruden for that yes. amazing quote. Uh, finally, Todd Gurley. Mm-hmm. I will not read this because it is not true. Ashley has wrote an ex- ex- inflammatory thing about Todd Gurley, she and it's not that. true. She, uh, she likes to insert things in my notes that are mm-hmm. I don't believe in. So Gurley recently told ESPN. Uh, I hate dogs. I love cats, though. Cats are so cool. Actually, I'm probably going to get some this year. I'll be cat dude. The fact he said I'm going to get some cats yeah. <laughs> as opposed to just a cat yeah. is amazing. So let's break this down real quick. Okay. People have this thing about dogs, right? Yes. Here's here's the here's reality. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like things that mess up my house. So oh. if that, inc- that includes humans, insects, animals. Yeah. Smells, mm-hmm. dirtness. dirtness. I'm not like I'm dirtness. not uh, I'm not like a like OCD or anything. Right. I just I don't want hair in my bed. Okay, yes. that's not what I want. Yeah. So I had a or dog crumbs. growing up to Lila. She was a wonderful dog. She was a German Shepherd. She died. It was very sad. Shout okay. Out to then we got a Rottweiler who was the worst dog ever. Goliath. He wouldn't oh, let me he walk in. Great. I had a every time I walked in, I had to put a sawed off bat in his mouth just so he wouldn't drag me down the street. I would love that picture. It wasn't fun. Okay, <laughs> and it wasn't a huge fan. And then in college, I got a little Yorkie who peed on the cable box and peed on everything else in the house. And it was Satan spawn, this dog. It was, I I, I literally ended up giving it to a little girl who lives on a farm. Like, please just take this dog. (laughs) Give this dog a nice life. You gave a dog to a little girl living on a farm because it peed on a cable box. No, not because it peed on the cable box, because it peed and shit on everything Uh. in the entire house. All the time. It barked incessantly. You got to train him, Joy. I did train him. Okay. Okay? He was a bad dog. And anyone who knew this dog would know that this is a bad dog. My mother <laughs> just will never back. let... Listen, my, my mother will never let me live this down. Yeah. Anyone who met this dog did not like this dog. Bad and dog. that's like, this is... He was a bad dog. There what is such a thing as bad dog. And Romeo was a bad dog. Romeo. Although he was adorable and he had an excellent name. Excellent name. I gave it yeah. to him. He must die. I did have a cat growing up, Jezebel, and she was the best cat ever. Yes, you mentioned Jezebel. Yes, because she was a great cat. <laughs> I posted okay. a picture of a cat. You said it looked like Jezebel. Yes, exactly. Like Jezebel. Jezebel was a good cat. Okay, and I don't have a problem with cat people. And I don't know what the big stigma is. If you're a cat person, like you're, you're like evil. Here's the thing about cats. They don't need all your, att- they don't need attention all the time. They don't. Okay, they can go to the bathroom on their own, yeah. you know, like much like a human. Mm-hmm. They don't need assistance. In you just have to clean place. it up yeah. in a specific place. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you have the, the setup, they don't, the, that place doesn't even need to be in the house. It can be like on a porch or something. Right. The scent can be outside. Yeah, but that's... Okay, you can buy, you can get cats that are hypoallergenic. Okay. All right. No, and that, they're that. smart. And yes, they may be sneaky. And yes, they may, you know, have some connection to the spirit world. Yes. But that that's, is it. That's that's the that's, that's the big the risk, bugaboo. That's the risk you take. OK, <laughs> that's the risk you take for owning a cat. Yes. Knowing where the ghosts are in the house. Because the opposite side of it is dogs, which, listen, uh, dogs are wonderful. OK, but they also bite you. Shouts out to Roblox. OK, they also yeah. bite you. Sometimes um, you have to physically walk them. Otherwise, your house will be filled with shit and piss. That is that is the craziest they thing eat about a dogs. Lot. Okay, yes. and they shed everywhere. So do cats, I know. No, but that's no. That's, I listen. Dogs are for people who need to, you know, get their power. Ashley loves dogs. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not an unfair. Is statement. this real life? Has this past, past five minutes of conversation yes. been real life? It's not. It's not. It's I not don't everything love cats. Said listen, I don't love cats, but like, let's be real. I just love cats and dogs equally, and I don't understand. You don't love them yes, equally. I do. Yes, I do. That's not available. That's mean? not see no. like Todd Gurley would say that Todd Gurley would say Same I like cats. dogs more, but I'm gonna live with the cats because no, I, I like hates dogs. I like living out. I don't, I don't like coming home every night. That's dogs are people who like coming home every night. No, yeah. dog, dogs listen. Mm-hmm. Dogs love you. Do do cats love I anything? I don't, cats do love I don't you. need all that. How? I love me. How do they how? show it? Yeah. They come cats, up and they, they, they give you a little rub on your leg. Cats don't know how to love either. Cats don't know how to love. And then they go off. Cats don't know how to love. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They struggling. No, cats yeah. are cats, cats you know, are completely sniff out bombs completely, and, drugs. Uh, and that's why people get multiple cats because you need uh, you need a love rotation for the cats. <laughs> a love rotation, seriously. You just like like validated cheating. I mean, listen, 
<laughs> dogs, listen, dogs are very loyal. Cats are cats are, are different. Different. They're more temperamental. Right. Dogs come home. They make you feel loved every night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're big. They're dumb. They're big dummies. Listen, first of all, cat people them. are evil. Cat people are not evil. Just like the cats. No. Mm. No. I know this is a big point of contention for people. I like dogs and cats equally, which is why I don't have either. Dogs versus but cats. But what, what yeah. is the purpose of cats on this planet? You give them a little rubby rub. Mm. That's the only purpose? Because, you know, dogs do a lot of things. Thing. The they sniff thing. out drugs. They sniff out bombs. You know, there's cats police chases you know the in L.A. Yeah. Dogs don't let you know where the ghosts are. The only are. reason do- dogs do that crazy shit is because they're manipulated. Mm. Dogs are dumb enough to get manipulated. Can cats can't cancer. get manipulated. Cats can't be manipulated. They, can't they, be, they do whatever the hell they want I'm not when they to want do that. to. Because there's no purpose time. for them to exist. Yes, there is. And it's it's called companionship. Just not the con- mm-hmm. not, not the needy person companionship. Dog it's, people are needy. I said it. Dog people social. are needy. No, Dog people are needy. social. Are there cat parks? Cat people they're, need Are there too. cat parks? Cat people You know why? There aren't because cats would just run off because cats don't give a about life. They don't. They don't care about Hillary. Is pets are needy. Having pets that is, is, for, is for needy people. Yeah. Sorry. Well, just oh, actually, true. I'm not sorry. For people not who not have sure. a little more time on their hands than others. What people if you, want to love. People want to love I, and care. I people want to care. People want. People want to feel. Well, I wish I, get yourself a human. I wish I had more time to do That's human stuff. Too. So the idea of filling my human time by taking care of a pet seems real needy. I mean, That's, That's all. I got to pick yeah. up Roblox after this from daycare. Shouts to Roblox though. Yeah, he he's a good dog. Yeah, I, listen, there's, there's great dogs and there's great cats. All I'm just saying is Todd Gurley is entitled to his opinion about cats. That's all I'm saying. There's a power rank. There's a power rank. These are the losers the losers of the week. My, boy, my throat is very dry. <clears throat> it, uh, I heard it real yeah. quick. A little, uh, all right, so number three loser this week, Timberwolves. Yes. Timberwolves are losers this week. They didn't sign Steph Curry because of golf. <laughs> That's so he said road. this on Bill Simmons' podcast. Everyone knows how much I love golf. We do. Mm-hmm. We get it. Seriously, we get it. Uh, I played. It's enough. All right. Yeah, we played in my spare time and whatnot. I think the word in the street was that then Minnesota executive David Kahn didn't draft me because in Minnesota it's cold and I wouldn't be able to play as much golf. So I would have been miserable. Hmm. Look at that. Well, uh, Curry went seventh overall in that draft behind back to back point guard picks by the Timberwolves who signed Ricky Rubio and Johnny Flynn. So sweet. <laughs> I move. mean, Ru- Rubio, Rubio, uh, Steph Curry backcourt. That could have been mediocre. Um, I mean, look. Uh, Saved by golf. Steph, Steph wound up where he was supposed to be. Yeah. I would like to say it worked out for everyone, as Melissa did earlier. Yeah. Not so. Yeah, that's Not true. so. Made the wrong choice there. Yeah. Um, I love when teams do stuff like this. It's so funny to me. Oh, he, he loves golf. I'm pretty sure he's going to hate it here in Minnesota. Probably not a good pick. Let's go with Johnny Flynn. <laughs> He hates golf. The, 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 the thought process of letting this information leak out or just like for it even being a factor is insane. <laughs> well, look. Get the guy the, who's going to make thing, your franchise thing, better. All right. The thing I don't get about it is like everyone plays golf. All these guys play golf. Yeah. That's their thing. Yeah. Who cares? Why, golf? I can see like, oh, this guy's like super into uh, surfing or something. Wasn't the goat obsessed with golf? Obsessed. He yeah. still is. He yeah. literally lives on a golf course right now. That's what he does. That smokes cigars and drinks some sort of liquor. Um, all right. Second loser. I alluded to this at the beginning of the show. Jason Witten mm-hmm. has a new curse. He made his broadcasting debut for the Jets and the Washington team, yep. uh, the Washington R Words. Yes. And during his breakdown of Sam Darnold prior to the game, Witten compared the rookie quarterback to... <laughs> the what? Tony Romo. Tony Roma. Mobility, poise in the pocket, and the ability to improvise. I give Tony Romo a very hard time in this podcast, and it's because he's never won anything, and he is widely considered to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. That is insane to me. And we're not – let me with Dan Marino, okay? Dan Marino is literally one of the greatest quarterbacks of all yes, time. Yes, 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 I don't know what the obsession with Tony Romo is. I've never understood it. He was – Good when the Cowboys were bad sure, okay. and they needed something? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, I really I, don't understand Here's either. the thing. If I'm a Jets fan, I'm like, man, I really hope Sam Darnold's better than Tony Romo. That's Oh, all. my gosh. That's pray to the – yes. Just pray. start playing to the football gods. Pray that curse off of you. Tony Romo. I'd also like to keep track of how many quarterbacks Jason Witten compares to Tony Romo. Can we start a ticker on yes, that? Yes, we'll Let's start a we'll tally on that. So we have one, Sam Darnold. Yes. I would like to keep track throughout this entire season of mm-hmm. how many Tony Romo comparisons Jason Witten does. Do you grade performances of like the people in the? I, I thought I thought I thought Jason Witten was 
Oh yeah, yeah. J- I mean, Jason Wynn was going to be good. Like, yeah. and, and and I'm sure he worked with someone in broadcasting ilk. Okay. You know, to yeah, get I better. Sure we're I thought it was like, good. The Tony Romo that retired with the fourth best passer rating in NFL history, right? Yeah, yeah, that Tony sweet, Romo. Sweet, sweet. Okay, okay. Just being sure. One. Just being sure. Sweet. Passer rating. Mm. It's crazy how great a stat that is for how terrible the quarterback yeah. he is. It's cool. He's weird. Passer ratings. The most underappreciated. Oh my god! Underappreciated. underappreciated. If I have to hear Tony Rumble's name again, I mean, if I could get a penny every time I heard Tony Rumble's name, I'd be a billionaire. I didn't know the Ring of Honor existed until Tony Rumble retired. The Ring of Honor. I'm like, it's Ring of Honor. Cowboys Ring of Honor. Mm. Hell out of here. Anyway, uh, finally, Nick Young is out on Jordans. <laughs> Good. Hottest take of the century. How many times can they remake the same Jays? It's not that hard to come up with new shoes. <laughs> Does he know that they're kind of Team Jordans every second? They're just being worn by basketball teams around the nation uh i mean it just he i look it's they're jordans like you're not gonna take down you're not gonna take down jordans it's they're, they're called happen. retro jordans swaggy p there's numbers on them <laughs> there's a model does he understand how repeatable models work repeatable no. models people follow them i love it i love it so dumb no you're not taking down the jordans. yeah you actually sound like i i wanted a more in, intelligent takedown of, of, of michael jordan like one that was like somebody not as rep i mean swaggy p Swaggy P has, coming for Jordan. He's out on Jordans. He's coming for Rockport's next. Not the, uh, the who's he coming for next? Rockport's. Uh-uh. <laughs> Non-slip. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> All right, what's in the culture report this week? All right, Nicki Minaj has been tripping. The Queen's rapper, singer, bar writer, has been in her feelings since her new album Queen didn't dethrone Travis Scott's Astro World at the number one spot. The Houston, New York beef started on Twitter when Nicki Minaj blamed Kylie Jenner's popularity for Queen's first week sales. The beef spilled over into real life last night at the VMAs when Travis Scott reportedly demanded that he sit away from Nicki Minaj. They sent verbal shots back and forth. Cardi B got involved at some point. Then this morning on the Queen's radio Apple morning show, she said, we're what we're not going to do, oh, you know, the queen's talking. What we ain't going to do. What we, what we're not going to do is have this auto tune man selling fucking sweatshirts, telling you he sold a half a million albums because he fucking didn't. You stupid. Fuck. You got fucking homeboys talking for you. You got your girlfriend selling tour passes. Stop it. Knock it the fuck off. The queen is being very petty and childish. <gasps> I don't like this. The difference between her being a superstar and a star is her doing drudging this all this. Like she should put the album out and bow out and just Oh my relax. gosh, stop it. Nikki can do whatever she wants. Well, that, this is insane. She has an army ready to fight for her. Let the army fight and you back up like queens do. I have no issue with it, actually. Really? I mean, if you're gonna come, come correct. It's so spicy. <laughs> the calling out the she said calling out it's the baby so spicy. it is why is, oh she, she didn't talk about their kid though <laughs> she did she said they're gonna just like selling albums because they people want to take pictures with stormy Ooh. it's just this is stormy is incredibly cute i mean yeah the kardashians make cute babies with black people <laughs> all right what's next <laughs> Big facts. okay uh drake doesn't kanye uh the drake and the three amigos tour stopped in chicago saturday night and everybody was waiting for Jersey Drake to do something or say something to confirm this ongoing beef with Kanye West. During Drake's set, the Canadian bar, Easter, you like that? Mm-hmm. Changed the lyrics of his 2015 tracks, Know Yourself, from Then Kanye Dropped in Those Polos and Backpacks to Then Kanye Flopped, It Was Polos and Backpacks. This uh, received plenty of boos from the Chicago crowd. Yeah. And that's about it. Um, know your audience. We're probably, we'll never hear Kanye address... Kind uh, Drake's parade of shots. We will not. But I don't think Drake's gonna stop until he does. So that's that's pretty that's pretty mm-hmm. much all, all I got to say. Hey, remember it. that time Drake was done? Nobody was gonna ever listen to Drake again. Uh, Nobody was gonna ever buy Drake blackface, tickets. And remember he that didn't time? Address remember it. Remember that time? Uh, it was just a rap, and it was just over for Drake. I mean, I it, loved yeah. that take. It was my favorite. You were quietly like stewing, just like laughing at the fact that like that's not I mean, the it's case. Ludicrous. It w- Shouts out to Ludicrous. Yeah. Ludicrous. Without Ludicrous, there would be no Luda. Drake. Luda. Okay. Southern Metallic. Um, only in the VMAs. Yeah. V- shout out J Lo. <laughs> yes, J Lo won the video. A Rod. A Rod's a meme yes. now. Can I do it? Those. 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 Hey, boyfriends of Instagram. Let's go, A Rod. <laughs> totally. Boy- oh yes. Let's go, A Rod. Yes, yes, totally. Yes, yes, I, yes. I actually I'm love proud it. Of him. I love. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I think Rockstar won Song of the Year. So Post Malone and Twenty One Savage. Shout out Twenty One Savage getting in the uh, Best New Artist. Cardi B 
Cardi B had bars for people. Yeah, yes, was, Tiffany was Haddish uh, had 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 things to say about the Fifth Harmony. Yes, is she not. She's not wrong though. No, I mean, let's be real. I mean, all those. I mean, all those. Camila Diddy, is the best. Yeah, all those Diddy bands. Like you know, there's there's one or two coming uh-huh. out from them. Are you just making noises over there? Distracting. Did you have something? To say? You said something about Camila. Yes. Right? Camila. Uh, yeah. Can. I, who is that? Oh my god. So I'm, I'm just gonna pretend. I, I mean, that. she's it's very a, popular, and I feel like her might, album is actually excellent. There might there are, would, there are two songs on there, mm-hmm. maybe three that I'm like, yeah, I could skip. Are this. Young Thug on all the good ones? All really good. That's, no, that's, the actual the actual album is good. Question. I'm uh, homework for you. Listen to the entire Camila that, Cabello. Uh, she seems very sweet. I'm just trying like to find it. out if I should. And find out who she's opening for. And she's from and she's from Miami. Who's she opening for? If you say Katy Perry, it's I Taylor swear Swift. She's opening for Taylor Swift. Obviously, she brought it up. Well, you gotta check the source. It's a great album. Yeah, let's go to report. All right, fun stuff today. Thanks yes. to Melissa Rycroft for joining us, mm-hmm. um, giving us an education on Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, yes, yes. which is uh, just an elite part of American culture. It is. Um, for show. you got to know who Jerry Jones is if you want to make the team. How do you not? you got to. And the president of the United and States. the president. Try. And POTUS. Guys, get. But I know POTUS can be confusing, but. Yes. It was confusing me when I first started hearing about it. Yeah. I was like, who is this person? It? Like FLOTUS. I had to learn about POTUS before FLOTUS. Why can't you just say the president or first lady? That's really good for Twitter when Twitter had the short thing. But now we don't even care because right. you, can, you can talk long on Twitter. Exactly. Anyway, um, thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe, share yes. with your friends, comment, follow us on all our yes. social media pages at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. There's still time to submit for the Fantasy Football yes. League. We have gotten hundreds of yes. submissions literally, yes. but it's okay because yes. you can still have a chance to play with us. Mm-hmm. Um, email micpodcast at fox.com. What do we want from them? Their name. One, first name. Two, last name. Three, hometown. Yes. Hometown. You know, you know, hometown. 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 Um, and we will announce that coming up very soon, along yes. with what we will be giving away. But really, you're just playing because it's fun. Yeah. To play with us. And also, you know, I'm, we're getting the emails. Give a little message. Give a little message. Oh. Did you it's not gonna, extra no, it's not going to weigh on the decision of who plays, but I like reading them. But Brandon has time on his hands, so that's that's what he's saying. <laughs> I don't, basically. I no messages. Uh, that's what he's saying. Also, hey! we announced it last week, but yes. uh, we're reminding you again. Our YouTube channel will be launching officially next week. Bam, bam. So uh, if you're part of Crazy Gang, we hope that you will subscribe Please. and uh, and share it. Yes. And um, we've we've had a good time with you guys. I don't know what episode we're on right now. Uh, 55. 55. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for being mm-hmm. prepared with that. Um, but anyway, so make sure you subscribe when that is launched, and we'll remind you and obviously put it out on all of our social media handles as well. At Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. Thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we will catch you next week. Bye. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Ooh.